A cooperative learning model has long been suggested as effective not only for teaching students the substance of accounting, but, perhaps just as important, for giving them experience with team settings which will serve them well in their studies and later on in their careers. In this presentation, I present my own approach to cooperative learning in the context of various physical props I've collected teaching introductory accounting, what I call my cooperative learning toy chest. The critical goal in cooperative learning is to help students learn from one another. To accomplish that objective, we need to start out with the understanding that cooperative learning is more than just group work, but involves a carefully orchestrated process of team implementation. In my classroom, team building follows three phases. First, team inception. Second, team development. And third, team activity management. With teams which I've pre-selected for balance in academic performance, gender, and ethnicity, team inception starts immediately. When the students enter my class on day one, they retrieve an envelope with their name on it, designating their color-coded team. Entering the room, they immediately see something different. The desks arranged as team tables rather than in rows and columns. I set up the desks prior to the first class, but going forward, my students are happy to rearrange desks for each class. Quoting Johnson, Johnson, and Smith, how the instructor arranges the room is a symbolic message of what is appropriate behavior, and it can facilitate the learning groups in the classroom. Members of a learning group should be close enough to each other to share materials, maintain eye contact with all group members, and talk to each other quietly without disrupting the other learning groups. With teams physically in place, it's time to begin the team development stage, where students begin to learn to work together in their teams. On opening their envelopes, the students discover a small number of accounting bonus bucks, which I pass out for participation and performance to both individuals and groups throughout the class period. I find that the bonus buck incentive system inspires a high level of student participation and engagement. An essential aspect of team development is ensuring that each student has a role on her team. I place a roll map on each team table so that each student is seated facing a description of his role with the team name chosen by the students based on color during the first class placed so that I can read it. The CEO is responsible for the overall functioning of the team. She guides the discussion during team activities and chooses the team spokesperson for oral responses. The CEO can also call time out during any part of the class to give the team two minutes to catch up on the material. Most team activities are timed. It's the timekeeper's responsibility to keep one eye on the timer in front of the room to make sure that the team stays on task and finishes their assignment before time is up. Where a written product is required, it's the responsibility of the recorder to work with the team in coming up with and writing out the written response. The treasurer receives and distributes bonus bucks to the team. Note that while teams typically have four or five members, bonus bucks are usually handed out in packages of six or seven. It's the treasurer who gets to determine who receives the extra bonus bucks. And finally, the backup is ready to fill in for any vacant role and help the CEO keep the discussion moving. I generally let the students choose and rotate team roles as they wish. To be sure that students maintain awareness of their roles, however, I ask them to initial their roles on each day's attendance sheet. With roles established and interdependence between team members growing, the focus turns to activity management, using teams for actually learning accounting. 
Most of my classes incorporate two or three team activities with written responses recorded on individual team marker boards, which provide a better focus than sheets of paper and fit perfectly under our overhead projectors for easy viewing by the entire class. Timed activities keep teams on task, and my large display kitchen timer, which fastens magnetically to the main marker board, can be read throughout the classroom and easily monitored by each team's timekeeper. A healthy cooperative learning environment generates a level of what I call controlled boisterousness, so a quiet signal is required. Actually, my genuine Acme Thunderer whistle turns out not to be the quiet signal. After the students hear it just once at the beginning of the semester, <coughs> merely placing it, the whistle to my mouth generally quiets them down. To keep the class moving along, it's important to be able to quickly select individuals or groups at random to respond to questions and give solutions to problems. The students seem to enjoy my ever-present deck of cards, useful for selecting individual students, and my dice, which I use for selecting groups. Thank you for letting me share with you my staging of cooperative learning teams using various signs, props, and toys in my three-stage process of team inception, team development, and team activity management. For me, the students come first, and their positive comments and course evaluations suggest that my cooperative learning approach is successful in helping them not only learn accounting from one another, but also learn to be effective team participants. Thanks again.